Today in Mysteries of History, we are looking at the site of the archaeological discovery of the remains of Queen Ketevan of Georgia. It is said that the architect of this church stationed his only son within the church and ordered to fire a cannon at the structure to show his confidence in his design. Close to the nunnery of Santa Monica still proudly stands a lofty tower defying the vagaries of the weather and the ravages of time. This is the only surviving tower of the four that were once a part of the Church of St. Augustine. What was once perhaps the biggest church in Goa is now a crumbling ruin. Largely deserted with its glory days behind it. However, this ruin still has some secrets left to divulge to those who are willing to dig deep enough to find them. Actually, it is the tower is part of the facade of the Church of Nossa Senora de Graça, that is our Church of Our Lady of Grace. In 1986, UNESCO declared the ruins to be a World Heritage Site. This complex was built by the Augustinian order. It comprised the Church of Our Lady of Grace, the Convent of St. Augustine, the College of Populo, and the Seminary of St. Gilherm. The church is dedicated to Our Lady of Grace. Its construction was started in 1597 and was completed around 1602. Originally comprising of four towers and a massive vault, the dimensions of this superb edifice placed it on par with the great imperial cathedrals of the Renaissance era. Once the Portuguese came, one thing that happened was, see, the Portuguese, um, you know, came from a different culture. And we know that, uh, for example, in Europe, already the culture was, you know, in certain ways, uh, they were more organized. One thing, for example, we see the way records were kept. You know? Now, in, in India and in Goa also, before the Portuguese came, we were not much aware of history, and most of the things were oral. Now, once the Portuguese came, a lot of things were recorded. Therefore, if you see in the archives, for example, you see a lot of things. So that got systematized. Then this whole bureaucracy that they brought in, you know, the whole thing of office, administration, you know, these things were uh, things that the Portuguese brought in. The tower, which still stands, is built of laterite. This great structure stands four stories high. It was intended as a belfry. The ancient bell that once resided there has since been moved first to the Fort Aguada and more recently to Our Lady of Immaculate Conception Church at Panaji, where it remains till date. The tower that you see, there was a chapel dedicated to St. Augustine there and it is part of the facade. The original Church of Our Lady of Grace once contained eight chapels, four altars and had a convent attached to it. Upon entering the church, there was a high altar backed by a richly carved retable. The whole structure being supported by soaring pillars the vestiges of which remain visible today. The immense vault of the church collapsed in part due to its weight and the nave of the church is now open to the sky.
there was also an immense choir loft capable of holding a large chorus of monks then the other thing they brought in and which today also we have is the law and i think especially the law of inheritance i think goa is the only place where uh, when you know the the inheritance is divided it is divided equally so if there is a girl and a boy they will each one get 50% which is not there in any other part of india where only the boy gets or how many boys are there it is divided among them but not among means among the sons not among the daughter so this in a way also gave much more equality to the women and therefore you see the women are much more empowered in goa than in other parts of india and i think that is one of the positive things the convent was built on three levels and once contained two cloisters numerous corridors pillars and galleries the remains of a refectory that is dining hall guest house and infirmary all of which were very spacious have also been found it also had vast dormitories and numerous cells where the monks spent their day to day lives in 1835 the augustinians were expelled from goa and as a result the church was abandoned In 1846 the main vault of the church collapsed and the convent rapidly decayed Of all the majestic buildings that once stood here all that is left to see today is the belfry of the tower which soared 150 feet high An old tale recounts how the vault of the church was problematic to construct and in fact fell down twice whilst being erected. The third time that it was put up, the architect, to show his confidence in his design, stationed his only son within the church and ordered that a cannon be fired at the structure. Fortunately, his confidence was not misplaced. and the structure held even though the original church lies in ruins it becomes ever more apparent that it yet has unplumbed depths The whole world was concerned a few days back about her mysterious bone that was kept here for veneration by the Augustinian friars. Careful study beginning in 1990 has recently resulted in the discovery of the remains of the lost martyr Queen Ketevan of Georgia. Queen Ketevan was the dowager queen of Kakheti a kingdom of Georgia after the death of her husband the king her kingdom was invaded by Shah Abbas the 1st having easily conquered the kingdom he took the queen prisoner and she languished in Iran for almost a decade in 1624 She was served an ultimatum by Shah Abbas the 1st. She could either convert to Islam and join his harem or be tortured and executed. The queen chose to die for her faith. Accordingly, she was tortured by being stripped to the waist and having her flesh torn off with the use of red hot pincers before being strangled to death. with a bow string
This took place on the 22nd of September, 1624. She was then buried without ceremony. However, she had in her last days befriended two Augustinian monks. These faithful men dug up her remains, smuggled them out of the country and brought them to Goa. An ancient Portuguese document suggests that the remains were entombed in a black sarcophagus and kept in the window embrasure of the convent of the Augustinian monks in Goa. However, when the convent and church were abandoned and fell into disrepair, many of the relics were looted and plundered. The remains of the queen were similarly thought to have been lost. However, recent archaeological excavations have resulted in the discovery of an arm bone and other bone fragments as well as the remains of a black box. After DNA testing, these bones are believed to be the remains of Queen Ketavan. There is little that can be seen today of the gracious and imposing church and monastery which once stood at this site. However, it is still considered worth a visit. Clambering over the old ruins causes one to reflect on the passage of time and its vagaries.